So I've been talking a lot about uh, Raymond E. Feist in the last couple of months, maybe three months in particular, because he, he's been involved in the production of a TV series adaptation of his Rift War saga, along with the Empire trilogy that he wrote with Jenny Wirtz. It's called The Rift War Cycle. Um, and it's being, it's an independent deal. Who knows if it'll actually get a series order or not. But what's been very interesting is to see him be active in explaining that whole process to all the fans on his Facebook page. And I found he had a very, really, really great commentary around the rings of power, um, reaction that people were having with a lot of fans being, you know, upset with Rings of Power and being like, this is not what this is supposed to be. Like, this is not the Second Age. You've invented all these characters, done all these things. Um, he, 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 his commentary was very measured and was like, look, you know, the, the version of the book that I write is this. The version that you, the reader, has is your version. And then... Every other reader has another version. Everybody's got a different version of the characters, the setting, their interpretation of that original source material. And you just it carries on down the line. So by the time you get to someone who is a showrunner, they've got a completely different interpretation than the original author had. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way it is. But he talks a lot about how no one sets out to make bad television and bad film it's just some things have better budgets than others some people work better together um, in terms of different creative minds coming together who have a shared vision of their interpretation um, it, it's just always different but um, I was really kind of interested it was interesting to me this morning I was out doing morning chores feeding the chickens and everything else um, taking care of the cats and I'm on my phone just kind of scroll it's like 3 30 in the morning four o'clock and I saw this article from Looper, and I was like, I'll be damned. Like, there's actually some more, you know, some larger media starting to pick up on this now. I mean, the original report, I think, was Deadline. Um, but it's been it's been sort of all quiet on the Western Front since the, um, since the original announcement, because it's just a lot of work that has to be done. And as far as I understand, these guys are putting together a show Bible. Um, it's, a, it's a very, it's a very interesting process. Anyway, Looper has an article up. Um, you guys are getting me stream of consciousness style this morning, so I apologize. I have no show notes. It's literally just, I think it's five, it's almost five in the morning here on uh, February 7th. I got coffee and sat down, and this was literally the first thing I'm doing this morning. Um, happy to see that Looper had an article up about it. We're going to go through that here in a minute, but I, I want to talk a little bit about Raymond Feist as a writer. Um I have loved his work since I was a kid. I've not read all of the Rift War stuff, though. I stopped after um, the Serpent War saga, and I, I mean, which I think was only three or four trilogies in, and he then wrote an, uh, more trilogies, and I think it came out 30-ish books. Pretty sure this article mentions it, that's, which is why that, mem that number's in my mind. But the original Rift War saga books... And then the Empire Trilogy after it, which he wrote with Jenny Wirtz, those are the two things that have been optioned to be made into a show. Just those original six, those first six books have, there is so much that goes on. I mean, it's it's amazing um, the amount of material they have to pull from to create seasons of a show. Because they could go, they could go a hundred different ways. It's not, I don't think it's quite like say the Lord of the Rings where you have a fairly singular, I mean, yeah, you kind of had some characters going off and doing, uh, and doing other things, but it's towards a singular thing, which is the destruction of the one ring, right? Rift War Saga is more about, you know, you've got politics over here and politics over here and politics over here and politics over here and characters over here, characters over here, characters over here, characters over here. You've got a huge landscape. Um, a lot of time passes, but one of the reasons I always loved Raymond Feist was not just because of how good his books were and how good of a writer he is, but the fact that Midkemia started off as a tabletop campaign with him and some of his friends. That, to me, 
has always been like the core of why I loved Rift War because I was like, this is another example like Dragonlance where we have a campaign setting that's been turned into a book series and it was just, I loved it. And the Rift War saga is actually not my favorite um, of his books that I've read. Um, Jimmy the Hand is probably my, my favorite character and the Rift War saga is probably the most it's definitely in the top like five books that inspired me when I was writing um, Echoes of the Past for the Saga of Lucimia and as I built that world up. Whereas with Weave and Void, I'm, I'm more in the Dragonlance realm right now for inspiration for that project. But um, Raymond Feist, uh, Tad Williams, Robert Jordan, um, those guys were all in there in terms of people I was looking to to inspire me when I was, when I was writing that first big fantasy novel. And... As much as I took inspiration from like um, the Thieves Guild that he had in um, the Mummers, is that what it was called? I, it's been a long time since I read the books, but the the group that Jimmy the Hand was a part of, um, that was huge inspiration for my Blackbirds, um, for the Blackbirds organization, who are less th they're more of a th they're more than just the Thieves Guild, they're more an informational network and everything else. Um, but the Serpent War saga for me was the that was the book, the book trilogy that I always gravitated towards when I would want to go back and do a reread of, of Feist years ago. And it's been, God, when I was younger, before the internet, and before TV shows, I used to read a lot. Um, not so much these days because there's great television on um, and there's lots of great video games, other distractions. But um, I think it was what Eric was the, the like the bastard son of a, of a local lord. Um who was a blacksmith apprentice and his, you know, he's this kind of sketchy weasel of a friend, Rupert, I think was his name. Um, and they go off and have these adventures and get involved in the war and, and become soldiers and, and then rank up. And it's, it's a great trilogy of books. Um, the serpent war saga, but um, it's, it's one of those things where in terms of, just being a good writer, he always has entertaining characters. Um, he doesn't let it get out of control. So you'll see guys like, I mean, I, I, as much as I love A Song of Ice and Fire, George R. R. Martin, one of the reasons he's having such a hard time wrapping up his series is that he's gotten older and he just created this thing, this monster that has, you know, it's like Robert Jordan style. You've got 500 characters, threads that you have to keep track of and you've got no point now where they've just gotten so untangled you can't figure out how to bring it all back together again that's that's <laughs> that has to be a frustrating place to be at um but thankfully feist never did that feist always works within a pretty tight structure um it's usually fairly linear and um i've just always loved it and also his non-fantasy stuff like fairy tale still remains to this day like one of my favorite um, it, at the time that I read it, it was kind of a horror novel, but it's like a contemporary horror fantasy thing crossover. Cause there's like, I think he's like a screenwriter or something and him and his family move out to the woods and have a house and that house has got some creepy shit happening in it. It's been a long time since I've read that novel, but that's my vague recollection. I just realized I'm eight minutes in stream of consciousness. Guys, sorry. I'm eight minutes in and I haven't even gotten to the article yet. It's going to be one of those videos. So let's talk about this. Ray Fi's Thrift War Saga could change the face of fantasy TV, and it's already optioned. So I've already given you a little bit of background on my association with Feist. It might be different for other people. That's just been my fascination, you know, um, enjoyment of him, at least in the earlier parts of my life. Like I said, I never finished I never finished the Rift War series. I know he's written a lot more books since then, and he's on to a new trilogy now. Which I think he may have just wrapped up, and he's working on something else. Um, I need to get back into Raymond Feist. So what I'll probably do later this year is get his most recent trilogy and get caught up on that and see what that's all about. Because that's a brand new setting in a brand new world. Um, and then, by that point, hopefully Tad Williams will have finished with his new King of Austin Ard series. I think is what it's called. And once that's finished, I'll go back and read through that. Because I love, I love the world of Austin Ard, and I love Tad Williams, man. Um... By the way, if you want me to talk more about my favorite authors of book series, let me know. I can do videos on those. But um, 
he okay so the article says you know now that game of thrones witcher wheel of time house of the dragon lord of the rings rings power of ushering in a golden era for fantasy television it was only a matter of time until someone turned their attention to Raymond Feist's Rift Force Saga. Good news for us, but an almighty nightmare-inducing task for the brave souls who have volunteered to bring the project to life. I will agree, because that's what I was saying earlier in the video. You know, there is so much that happens in the Rift Force Saga and the Empire Trilogy. Like, so much. It's not just the war at Silverthorn, you know, and, and etc. It's also everything that's going on in the other dimension and so you've got interdimensional stuff, you've got dragons, you've got fantasy, you've got... That's just crazy. Um, Deadline did the reporting, which I've already covered this on my channel when it was announced. Um, six studios acquired the rights to Feist's Rift War Saga and Empire Trilogy. And then they've got a, a team of people who have been brought on to adapt those books. Um, and they have kept um, Raymond Feist and... Jenny Wirtz fairly involved in the process from what I understand. This is why I've been, you know, following Feist so much recently, and especially is because he keeps people up. He's, he, he's very proficient on Facebook at the very least. Um, he's an older gentleman, and I realized that, you know, it's like Tad Williams. Tad Williams is kind of a, on Twitter, but he's mostly on, on Facebook. Um, these guys don't have time to do what I do and, and have... Consequently, I don't have the time to write that they do because I spend way too much time on social media, but that's my job doing youtube and stuff um waiting for the chicken there we go so um he does a lot of stuff on his facebook page about this process and he's been talking a lot about how you know they make they get they have requests for him on phone calls and it's mostly just what if we did this what do you think about this 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 and this and he and jenny Wirtz will provide feedback on that and say well i would do it this way um and this is the reasoning for this character's you know stuff and blah 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 but I also know, and this is a fun thing to hear from, from an author, is like he's already admitted, he's like, and yes, we're creating new characters for the TV show because it's an adaptation, not a direct word-for-word -word copy of. And I'm involved in that process, and that's what an adaptation does. It adapts on the existing material. So yes, there will be original characters because there were people in the comments of his <laughs> Facebook, excuse me, ranting and raving about the... Um, the invented characters in Rings of Power, and he has a very, he had a very interesting take on that. Um, which, given that he's a living author working on somebody adapting his work, I appreciate hearing that because we get a perspective that we might not otherwise have gotten. We definitely can't get that perspective from Tolkien because he's long gone, uh, but Feist is here, and so it's been interesting to see these conversations that happen between him and the development studio. So the article then goes on to ask, what makes a Rift War Cycle TV series such an exciting proposition? Um, it says, well, in addition to being an adaptation of some of the best fantasy novels on the market, the series has the potential to showcase the best elements of genre television. After the planned TV show does spawn a larger franchise, there's certainly no short shortage of source material to mine from. There's a ton of source material. Um, and we don't know where it's going to end up. And that's the thing this article talks about. It says, before we can even start dreaming about where a reverse cycle television empire could end up. Because here's the thing. it's It's only been optioned, and there are people working on the adaption of it in terms of coming up with like the story. I don't know if any scripts are being written. I think right now it's still in the development of that series Bible phase. I think that's where it's at right now, as I understand things. Um, there are still some things we don't know, um, but that's one of the things I think he's talked about. I, I don't remember exactly where I saw that, but I feel like the, the, the handful of people they have involved right now, are just focused on that high level. Let's get the structure of the world in place. Script writing hasn't come until... I don't think that comes until later. Could be wrong. If I am wrong, somebody let me know in the comments below. Anyway, um, it's a long way from getting a series order is what I'm getting at. Uh, and someone talking about, you know, we, before we start dreaming of where it could go, yeah, that's a long way away. Um, focus on the projects that are in the works. So the Rift War Saga includes Magician Silverthorn and the Darkness of Sethanon, which is the original trilogy. So Magician centering around Pug um, and his rise as a magician. And then also um, Prince, Ar I think it was Arutha or Arutha. I, for I always forget him and Jimmy the Hand and all these other characters who get involved in this interdimensional war. Um, and, and, it's, it's just craziness. It's craziness. Uh, Silverthorn and Darkness is Sethodon. Uh, follow... Or it's Arutha, it even says right here. Ha, ah, yeah, I got it right. Um, as he encounters a dark power that threatens to destroy Midkemia. 
spearheaded by an evil overlord with an appetite for destruction. <laughs> um, it was a great trilogy of books. The Empire Trilogy then focused on um, a girl in another dimension in Kelowan um, as she oversaw the Sarani Empire after her uh, father and brothers get killed. And um, another great series. That's the one he wrote with Danny Wirtz. And it's there's just so much they could go through. So they talk here about the um, how Hannah Friedman, Jacob Pinion, and uh, Nick Bernadorn, Bernadone, sorry, are certainly talented enough to pull off that magic, pull off magic that Pug himself could be proud of. So we don't know what they're doing, and there's a lot of stuff in here about the the ways they could take the Rip Four Cycle um, series, which is interesting. Um, but this is the thing I wanted to focus on. If they do this. We've that's what I say. They've got interdimensional war, dragons, and more. I have another theme that I've worked on in in both of my fantasy series, less than the one I'm working on right now. Um, but they there are elements of it there. I continue to be influenced in my adult life by the theme of these, and and we've seen it. It's a trope. It is a trope. But the version I like the most has always been um, Raymond Feist's Dragons and the complicated backstory there with the with the wars and and the armor and and all sorts of other craziness. Um, Prince Ruther knows lots about that. <laughs> I've always found that version of you know dragons as an ancient culture who were much more than just these beasts that hoard treasure. They were actually, you know, part of the society of things. Shape-shifting is usually a common theme. You know what I mean? Like, it's a trope, but it's a good trope. And I've used that in both series because I love the idea of... of good. It doesn't matter if they're good or evil. You could do whatever you want with them. But having dragons be at the back of things, it's it's always fun. Um that's why I love Dragonlance so much too, by the way, guys. I like dragons. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I think dragons are really dope um, when they're done well. Like, I don't like the cheesy, you know, smog as a dragon. is It's it's okay. Um, but, uh, um, I'm, I mean, I like dragons who are more than just monsters. I like them when they're, you know, part of things. It, but it has to be done well. I, I never liked the World of Warcraft dragons storylines that much but that's just it's personal preference anyway back on track because we're doing this in a random way um we've got dragons wars all sorts of stuff and so it says here are you a fan of the political scheming of game of thrones perhaps you prefer epic adventure in the vein of rings of power and the wheel of time however if you're someone who'd like to see more political intrigue infused into an epic interdimensional fantastical adventure the Rift four cycle tv series should be one of your most anticipated shows this is what i was talking about earlier um that's one of the things that Feist has done better than many other authors is is his political stuff, which I, which is one of the reasons I was saying it's way more than just that linear adventure that the Lord of the, linear adventure that the Lord of the Rings was, because this has political intrigue going on in all sorts of different places, which but done you know done in a in a confined way, not like um, Wheel of Time where they just he went completely off <laughs> into the wilderness for a time for a few books there. Um, so there's a conflict between Midkemia and Kelowan that leads up to Silverthorn and Darkness at Sethodon. Um, and then, as they say here, culminates in battle with dragons. Then Mara's exploits, um, which, and it says here in the article, I love their take on it, um, will probably inspire more character-driven and political storylines that complement the sprawling adventurous elements. The threats that affect her are from within her own empire, but the story is just as riveting as Pug's interdimensional travels and Prince of Ruth's battle dark versus... You know what this has just done? This has made me want to go back and reread the Rift Force Saga and the Empire Trilogy. I have not read either one of these books. It's... Ugh, 20 years? It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've read any any of the Rift Force stuff. It it might be time for a reread this year. Um, ex- the only thing I have going on is the Wheel of Time reread. I gotta get that wrapped up because the next thing I'll do will be this. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Um, it says here the Rift Force cycle won't face the same criticisms as the Rings of Power. This has been. Um, I talked about this at the very beginning. I think um, one of the reasons I've been following 
Raymond Fi so much recently, and I and I've been including him on my channel a bit is because of his commentary on the Rings of Power. We have a living author who's adapting a TV show, so none of the complaints that people had against um, Rings of Power are justified here. So a lot of the complaints with Rings of Power were things like the original author's not here, and what would Tolkien say? What would Tolkien do? That's not what Tolkien would want. That's not Tolkien. Tolkien never wrote that way. Tolkien didn't intend that. Tolkien never had black elves. Tolkien never had this, that, or the other. That's the commentary that people have. That's a lot of the ammunition that's been used against the Rings of Power. Um, and they can't do that here. That ammunition is gone. Because Feist is the living author and the creator of and is involved in the adaptation and approves of the adaptation, is helping to create additional characters that weren't part of the books. He's on the front lines of adapting his work. Um, so yeah. Uh, it says here, let's pretend the Rift Force cycle actually uh, the Rift Force cycle actually goes ahead. It'll only be a time until the network executives acquire the rights to the other stories with the intention of producing spin-offs. This is all theory, by the way. Um, it says fortunately, Feist's uh, literary literary universe is littered with individual series within the overarching story, which could serve as a basis for TV series like the Serpent War Saga is a perfect example of that. Um, it says here, the Rift Force cycle will probably feature Jimmy the Hand. I hope it does. He's really cool. Um, spin-off idea, they said. That's a spin-off idea right there. Yeah, it is. Um, the same could be said for all the other series. A television franchise, a television franchise could produce 10 separate spin-off series based on Feist Sparks alone. Uh, while the Rings of Power... Oh, so, so they went with a different angle here than I than I thought they would. So the Rings of Power has been accused of not having enough source material to warrant a series about Middle-Earth's second age. Feist novels, on the other hand, Arguably have too much source material to choose from, and that's a good problem to have. Um, that is definitely a, another interpretation of of, of things, um, which I hadn't considered. It's cool stuff. That's why I love reading these articles uh, with folks. And I think that's the end of it, because um, then it goes into this other thing about um, Rings of Power stuff. Um, anyway, I'm a big fan of Feist. Holy crap, I did a 22-minute ramble video i don't think i've done that before um usually i just do these in the live streams but i got inspired this morning and um had a stream of consciousness idea and just wanted to come on here and talk about raymond feist for a little bit and how cool it is to at least have this be in the works and be able to get the inner workings of it from feist himself um i did another video recently here on my channel talking to, I, I went and read through one of his facebook posts i've done f uh, three or four of those now um, so for me, at the very least, it's it's a it's it's great insight into what's going on with his adaptation. Even if it never hits the screen, it's it's an educational process for me, which I appreciate. Um, but yeah, if you haven't read his books, you should. I'm gonna go read it. Um, if you just want a standalone book and you've never, and you know, and you're willing to do some contemporary horror. Uh, contemporary meaning at the time it was written it was like the mid 80s so it, it might even be like going back and reading a stranger things novel um which that's a thought man this is what happens in stream of consciousness stuff, and i'm like well what i could do instead of rereading those six books because that's a big undertaking i could just reread fairy tale which i've also not read in 20 25 years that would be a good book to review for my channel um food for thought Anyway, if you just want a single standalone adventure to get involved with Feist, with that's a great book to start with because it's a standalone. But otherwise, if you want to get into his fantasy stuff, definitely start with the begin. Start at the beginning. Start with the Magician, the first book in the Rift War Saga. It's a great series. It's really easy to read. Um, there's a reason it became a bestseller. So check it out. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you like this kind of stuff and the way I do things here on YouTube, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, drop a super thanks down below if you could. If you're watching this as a premiere or a um, live stream. Don't forget Super Chats and stickers and, of course, memberships, $3 a month all the way up to whatever you want to do um, here on YouTube. And then don't forget the Patreon page for our tabletop world, my fantasy book series. My wife does all the artwork for the chapters as well as all the artwork for the tabletop and then the point and click game that my brother's working on. Yeah, that's it, everybody. See you next time. Happy reading.